One of him. Well. It's not a particularly good weather report today. Sorry. We seem to be in some kind of... Uh, I don't know how to... Quantum sphere? I don't know what to call it, but... Like, see over there? It's raining over there. You can see it's raining pretty heavy there. And across the way over there. But over here? Dry. Can't get the water to come a little bit further south. <clears throat> the first year I was here was uh, flooding all the time. And they installed new roadways and stuff and sewers and water drainage. And it's kind of weird, but kind of got some wind going. One, two, three, four, five, six, six squid boats close but I don't know just a little bit weird let's see raining over there too raining all in within the viewable uh, parts of the my condo and no rain here so ah I, I had to turn the morning Joe off. I just have to, <clears throat> I'm just not a, well, I have to adjust this. I put a foot on my uh, thing here. Uh, I, I, I can't stand the, the herp or the derp on uh, morning Joe anymore. It's, I'll still watch it every now and then, I guess. I, don't, I mean, but. I mean, you wanna, you want to, um, you want to appreciate that Mitt Romney is actually, by some miracle, at his advanced age, somehow able to tell the truth, a little bit, and uh, I don't want y'all to be quick to forget. All the lying that bastard did uh, against Obama. That guy lied with every breath he took. He's not just a liar. He is a psychopath. A born psychopath. If you're not sure about it, just uh, Google the steel company that he bought in Missouri. I'll give you the quick details uh, a bunch of people pay, overfunded their pensions <clears throat> in a steel plant in Missouri somewhere. Bain Capital uh, leveraged it, which means they borrowed money to buy the controlling interest of the company. Then they took all the money out of the fund, screwed all the people that donated to it, and uh, yeah, he's garbage. <clears throat> I don't like Mitt Romney. I don't like Mormons. Um, Mitt Romney is a bishop in the Mormon church, which means uh, he's going to get his own particular planet. And when he dies, first he goes to Colo, and then he sees the Joseph Smith Brigham Young circle or something. And then they're going to assign him a planet, and Mitt's going to get to have all the women he can possibly want, and all the slaves he wants, black people, make sure you understand that part too. This is what Mormons believe. I'm not making this shit up. And uh, and he's going to be the ruler of the planet. He's going to get to do whatever because he's, he's reached the bishop part, which it means the God part. Yeah, see, Mormons think they can be God-like and then... They get to hand out the planets that the Mormons get to be, you know, because this makes sense. Okay, I hear kids playing. I thought it was a kitty cat. Okay, so, uh, um, Mitt Romney said something so absurdly stupid that it's kind of mind boggling to appreciate it. Mitt Romney said that a considerable portion of the 
Republicans are not for the comp Constitution. <laughs> uh, really? Uh, I know you're a little slow, Mint, because you're a Republican and you're not too good at thinking and shit. You can sure screw people out of money, of course, but... Uh, yeah, this is something some of us have known about for a very long time. I'm, I mean, did you not understand what Richard Nixon was doing, Mitt? And Mitt is going to retire and, I guess, go enjoy his many hundreds of millions of dollars and his uh, car elevator. He's got a house with a car elevator in it. I'm not kidding. Because, you know, that's, you know, what a good, hard-working man does. And um, I guess Mint thinks that we're going to just uh, forget about all the lying, all the stupid shit that he has said. Mitt Romney is a moron. And Morning Joe trying to turn him into some kind of hero pisses me off. Uh... Mitt Romney is a liar. He lied about Obama. He said, well, he, Biden's on, uh, President Obama's on an apology tour. Uh, can you name one of those countries he was apologizing to? Potato. Potato. So, uh, yeah, I don't like Mitt Romney too much. Incidentally enough, I'm kind of shocked to be saying what I'm about to say, honestly. I don't know, though. See, um, we're going to find out years from now when, whenever uh, Frontline does their, their piece on Trump, this point, this point in time, and I'm pretty sure they're going to have a, a, a side note. It's going to take a long period. It's going to take another Ken Burns to put together the kind of layout that's going to be effective for this day and age in Trump. But um, they're going to do a short stint on Eileen Cannon. And somewhere between the last court date that Trump had in her court and uh, today, or a couple of days ago, Eileen Cannon, who was a flamenco dancer slash uh, yoga instructor slash attorney, now federal court judge. Well, she's also a member of the Federalist Society. And the Federalist Society is run by Leonard Leo. And he has profited... Uh, spectacularly from it because he was a, he was adept and very good at coaching Supreme Court nominations first making them submit submitting their names so that dumbasses like Bush and Trump <clears throat> would appoint his preferred uh, picks but he was also really good at coaching them and saying well that's a topic that could come before the court, and I think it's inappropriate for me to answer something about, along the row line. Row is established thing, and we're we're just not going to do anything about it. I hate Leonard Leo. I uh, wish very bad things to him. If anybody deserves cancer, it's that bastard or Rupert Murdoch, who is incidentally uh, older than Joe Biden. Hmm strange. Uh, Fox won't shut up about that. But the point about the frontline part is, is somewhere along the lines, okay, here's what we know. Two lawyers who are members of the Federalist Society have uh, filed lawsuits in federal court <clears throat> against Trump to get to impose the 14th Amendment against Trump. Uh, Article 3 of the, or Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Now, their <clears throat> purpose is to get Trump thrown off the ticket, to thrown off, thrown off the ballots. And if they're successful at 
enough with it, especially in Florida. This is happening in not just Florida, in some other states too. But the important part to remember is this is Federalist Society attorneys. So who's yanking their chain? Leonard Leo is. And uh, I think Leonard Leo is, I'd, I wouldn't call him a stupid man. He is a religious bigot and a Christian dominionist. And, uh, well, he's told them lawyers what to do. And Eileen Cannon, in case you don't know, is also a member of the Federalist Society, as is Christopher Ray, who I think Joe Biden should fire immediately and get fucking Lewis the Joy. I don't know, sick the FBI on him, IRS, just sick everybody on to get rid of that motherfucker. I just, I'm so angry about that. But uh, back to my front, front line imaginatives piece Eileen Cannon I can't believe I'm saying this either uh, put the smack down on Trump today put the smack or yesterday and she told him he's not going to be he's not getting a skiff she didn't have the authority to give him a skiff to begin with but uh, she put a bunch of restrictions on him too that if he talks about classified data uh, then Trump is going to face civil and criminal penalties. Uh, now, the thing that Morning Joe and the rest of these dipshits are, uh, seem to be oblivious to is that Eileen Cannon has said that Trump had classified documents, and she has forbidden him to talk about the contents of those documents in any way, shape, or form. He can listen to some of them. She put very strict restrictions on that, too. He can listen to some of the things, but not via a wireless headphone. He has to be a wired headphone if he's going to contribute to his defense. But uh, the important part that all these, pe these political pundits seem to be uh, ignoring is that well, what happened to the whole idea that Trump declassified everything? Uh, Eileen Cannon has specifically forbidden him from talking about the classified intelligence that he was in possession of, which means he had possession of classified documents that he did not declassify, uh, which means that Trump is guilty of the multitude of felonies that Jack Smith has brought against him, okay? So, uh, Eileen Cannon has apparently uh, gotten the word from Leonard Leo, who is the chieftain of the Federalist Society. He's like, Eileen, you know you can count our support, count on our support. We're the ones that got you that job. We're the ones who got you the job being a federal court. And we're going to need you to not fuck up here. And we're going to need you to do whatever you can or whatever you're capable of, of getting Trump off the ballot. What? That's pretty damn amazing. That's, that's pretty damn amazing that she put those level of restrictions and admitted that Trump was in possession of top secret classified compartmentalized data that he is not allowed to discuss, not allowed to talk about. And, uh, isn't particularly, uh, and she's not giving him free access to all the data so that he can steal it again. So Eileen Cannon has flatly in admitted that Trump had was in possession of top secret compartmentalized data he did not declassify, according to Cash Patel, the moron, and uh, that he was in possession of classified documents. Uh, the case against Trump is made. That's the simple part of it. We just need 12 jurors to uh, confirm what we already know. And uh, that's going to be a relatively easy task. And if I were Jack Smith, I would have dumped Eileen Cannon just because I don't want to take a chance 
I would not take the chance of her going outside federal guidelines on what she is allowed to impose as punishment. So if I were Jack Smith, uh, I'd still yank her chain. But I also understand that what he needs is a, con a solid conviction. If it's Eileen Cannon that convicts him, and even if she gets him, gives him a light sentence, his first filing was in her court. The second filing was in Washington, D.C. He still has Bedminster if he wants. But the important part is, is that the case in Florida is going to go to trial first. So if he gets a conviction there, the guidelines, the federal guidelines on sentencing for somebody that gets convicted, say, in a Washington, D.C. court, means that the judge can exercise their own discretion. And... That's the game plan, I would bet cash money. So, uh, Jack Smith, uh, chef's kiss to you, buddy. Uh, you're playing this well. I like how you're d doing this. I wish I had access to more of your <clears throat> evidence because I love uh, discovery and want to know all the shit that that rat fucking trader has done. I especially want to know what his uh, crook son is uh, up to. And uh, Kevin McCarthy, hmm, Kevin McCarthy's going to be a one-term uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, he is a dumbass. He is a craven political whore who has sold out the, uh, the country uh, so that he can get a painting, a portrait painting for the Speakership. And he doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about holding his office. He doesn't have enough votes. That's his problem. Matt Gates is yanking his chain. And so he's going along with all this happy horseshit about Joe Biden, and he has absolutely no evidence. It's strange how that works. And uh, if history is any inclination, like Newt Gingrich, Bob Livingston, and Dennis Hastert of previous... Uh, uh, Recent history, well, 20 years ago, 20, damn, 24 years ago. Can't believe I just said that. Uh, then it's a good predictor of what's going to happen to old Kev. And uh, I don't know who's going to uh, take Kevin's place. Steve Scalise has got, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure he's got cancer. Come on, cancer. And uh, I don't know who's going to lead the Republicans, uh, but, oh, did y'all see uh, Lauren Boebert vaping in a, in, in a Beetlejuice production? Ah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, she get thrown out because she was singing along with the songs in a Broadway show. And in case you all don't know, People that perform on Broadway are liberals. Yeah, they don't like Lauren Boebert. And she was sitting there smoking on a, or hitting her vape, <clears throat> and apparently perturbed some other people who called security, and they threw her ass out. And I got a sneaking suspicion. We're not going to be rid of Marjorie, but I think a sneaking, I got a sneaking suspicion we're going to be done with Lauren this next time, this next election. Uh... Don't question Noster Thomas on this. What was the other thing I got? Oh, Mark Meadows. Remember that one? You know, that was one of my predictions that Mark Meadows would get goose egged and getting his case transferred to federal court. And voila, goose egg. <clears throat> but honestly, I want to tell you all something today. I, first, First, let me say this. Everybody that responded to that post that I made last night about Lily spilling the soup, thank you. I really liked all the comments. Lily really liked all the comments. She laughed and giggled, and I really appreciate them. I appreciate them, too. And I wasn't going to make that post, but uh, I made the post for a reason. And I'm not going to tell you all the reasons. I told one person, and that's it. And... But um, I'm sharing, I'm, uh, Maya Angelou once said, 
Well, when you get, give, and when you learn, teach. I like that lesson, okay? So, one of the things uh, that has got me in, in a, got my blood pressure up today is uh, the capture of this murdering dipshit uh, in Pennsylvania. And a dog caught him. I'm glad, I'm glad a dog caught him. But I wanted to tell you all a couple of things because <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people that don't mean to inflict trauma on other people, me especially. Uh, but you do when you uh, blow a bunch of sunshine up cop's ass. Okay, I don't like it. And you shouldn't like it either. And the reason why, first let me address something for you uh, concerning police dogs. Police dog, there's no such thing as a good police dog. Okay, the dogs are innocent, I understand that, but they are tools used by police officers to circumnavigate or navigate through the Fourth Amendment. So here's, I'm going to tell you how this works, okay? And there's not a police department in the entire country that is innocent of this. They're all guilty, 100%, not not. Not some, all of them are. So imagine, if you will, a police officer coming up, pulls you over for something. You don't know what you've done, whatever. And he doesn't tell you, license, res registration. And say, what seems to be the problem, officer? Well, that's enough to piss off one of these uh, troglodytes that we give badges to, okay? Now, uh, if you're a cop and you are displeased with somebody you're pulling over, if you want to fuck with them, the easiest way to do that is call a dog. Call a dog. Can I search your car and make sure there's no contraband in it? Uh, no, you can't. Okay, well, I'm going to call the dog out here and do that. So the police, so the p officer pulling them over calls a canine unit, okay? This has been documented thousands of times, thousands of times. And the problem is, is that you can't get a, you can't cross-examine a police dog, okay? So what the cops will do is they'll pull you over, they'll call a canine, and if you give them any kind of shit, they're civil servants, and they've got attitude problems, and they're power tripping, and so they're going to do whatever they can to show you who's the boss, okay? You're not going to question my authority. Respect my authority! So they call the dog out, and 100%, of the police dogs out there, if they if their hand, handlers run them across, if the cops uh, want to fuck with somebody, they'll let the handler know this, and the dog will always hit. Okay, all they all, and, and it doesn't matter if they hit or not; it's irrelevant because you're not going to be able to go to court because the Supreme Court has ruled on this already and said, "Fuck your rights." You know, if the dog says that. Uh, he smells something, it's probably shake on the floor. And there are multitudes of videos of police officers doing this to people, pulling them over, fucking with them, running a canine around them, and detaining, these pe detaining people for up to an hour, sometimes longer, um, and then searching their cars, pulling the, getting the people out of the car, ransacking their cars, saying, oh, well... The dog alerted on a little shake. Here's some shake. That's the favorite fucking thing of police officers to say. Well, there's some shake on the thing. You know, you had you were smoking your weed, and then you 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 you, you were too high to remember, and you spilled some shake on the on the floor. Every single canine police officer in the entire country, bar none, does this 100%. Now, I'm ha very happy that the murderer was uh, caught by a police dog. I'm very happy about it. I'm glad that there was a good police dog that did that. But that police dog is still a function, is a tool of subservience and uh, usurping your constitutional rights under the Fourth Amendment. Okay, and you need to not forget this ever. 
because if you forget this ever, you're going to find out the hard way. And I have some very uh, white people in my friends list, uh, and one of whom I airlocked today. One of whom I airlocked, and uh, because she was so oblivious, and she wanted to post about good job officers and everything. And I posted a video earlier today, earlier to me. I know y'all are just waking up. You can go look at it if you want. It's from the civil rights attorney. He's a, a lawyer in West Virginia. And he was showing this case in Georgia. And these, the police officers in that video, every single one of them should be under arrest. Every single one of them should be sentenced to prison. Instead of giving police officers deference to the law, they should be held to a higher standard. When police officers break the law, they should get a much harsher sentence, not the opposite. And these cops did that. There was a white woman who called the police on uh, some black people. And they said that there was, they heard an AK-47 or a gunshot or something, okay? So the police go to this guy's house. He's walking out of his house. They walk up on his property because the person who heard the gunshot figured it was from the black people. So the police officer walks up to him and asks the guy for his ID. Well, unless you've committed a crime, there's reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime you don't have to give the police your ID. But that don't work in Georgia because the police in Georgia are stupid. They don't understand constitutional rights and they don't give a fuck about constitutional rights. So the first thing that these assholes did when they, he gave him his, he gave his first name. He said, what do I need to identify for? What crime, what did I do? I haven't done anything. So this dumb shit cop puts him in handcuffs. And then his dumb fuck sergeant shows up and starts telling people that these black people start coming out of the house. And the sergeant is a black guy too, which made it even worse because he was so fucking stupid and oblivious that he didn't understand the law either. He said, well, if we come here and we get a call, we got to identify you. That's not the law. That's not how the fourth amendment works. And the police don't give a shit about the constitution at all. They care about dominance. They care about rule and subjecting you to their rules. And they don't give a fuck about the law. So this is what these sons of bitches did, okay? They took the handcuffs off the guy and uh, let him go, okay? This guy was justly angry about being put in handcuffs on his own property and being told that he has to produce ID and everything. And so he went and filed a complaint against, the, he made a, an official complaint against the police. So what did the police do? Did they say, well, we're gonna look into this and see, no, that's not what dumb shit cops do. What the cops did is they went and got a warrant for his arrest for obstruction, okay? Obstruction, number one, is a second, secondary charge. You have to commit uh, a crime first. It cannot be the primary charge for anything. And it's been a year and a half that this guy has been dealing with this uh, criminal charge, which he's completely innocent of. There's a video of everything, but that didn't stop the scumbag police officers from going out and swearing out a warrant for obstruction on this guy. Obstruction, so you know, is a physical act. It's not refusing to give your ID. But these police officers are so stupid and so hubris craze that they went and got after this guy filed a, a, a complaint against them for violating his constitutional rights, which they did. They went and got took out a warrant for him. Now, here's where it gets fucking sticky. OK, guess what these fucking assholes did? They go back to the guy's house and they knock on the door. Well, he's not there. So the wife is there and she's got dogs inside the house. So she's seen enough videos where cops come in and kill the dogs, shoot the dogs, okay? There's a shit ton of videos. If Just Google police killing dogs. There's hundreds of videos of it because cops don't give a fuck. They're psychopaths too. They're psychopaths or sociopaths. So here's what the police do, okay? 
the man's wife is still in the house. She's putting up the dog. So she's, she opens the door, answers the cops. And the cop doesn't shove his foot in the door to keep her from closing it. So she closes the door to put her dogs up, okay? And then she says she'll come out and talk. So as soon as she comes out to talk, they arrest her. They put her in handcuffs, okay? She's not under arrest, okay? And that's what, that's what not being arrested to these fucking dipshit cops. This is how stupid the police are, okay? So these dumbasses put her in handcuffs, put her in the back of the car, and take her to the police station, okay? Then they proceed to talk to her and tell her, well, if you get your husband to come in and turn himself in for this warrant that we have with him, the police were considering kicking in the door until she came in, she came outside. So they say to, to her, she's not under arrest, but the police don't give a shit. They've taken, kidnapped her from her house, taken her down to the police station, to ask her questions and then say, well, we'll let you go if you get your husband to come in and turn himself in. On their bullshit bogus charge that he obstructed the police from discovering who shot, uh, made this report, who shot the gun. Well, they did a search of the guy. There was no registered firearms to this address. And they didn't bother to investigate if this person that called in and reported the gunshots, if they were hearing something, if they were old and senile and didn't know what they hear, or if they heard a car backfiring, or none of that shit mattered. These asshole cops were sitting here conspiring together to try to arrest an innocent black man whose rights they had violated. And they didn't give a shit. So they kidnap his wife, take, him, take her wife to the police station, and put her so she can't leave, she can't call anybody, nothing. Deny her her constitutional rights. And they had no right to take her. And so the husband comes in and turns himself in, and then the police let the wife go. Okay? Now that's the kind of shit, that's the exact kind of shit that the police do every fucking day in the United States. Because the United States is a police state. Okay? I don't want you to find out this the hard way. Because for too many people, like the dipshits that have been posting this nonsense about, well, the police did a good job, bunch of shit. No, they didn't do a good job. How long did it take them to catch that bastard? Two weeks? You think that, that, that's something you would call them? Well, you're relieved that they caught a murderer. Well, I guess they should have thought about uh, how he got out and made the prison, sent him to a more secure prison or some shit like that. But these cops violated these people's right. I have limitless, literally limitless amounts of examples similar to this. But this one would just really stuck in my crawl because they went and arrested his wife functionally. They said, well, we didn't arrest her. We just brought her down to the police station. They brought her down in handcuffs, put her in a police interrogation room and refused to release her until her, her husband turned himself in on the bullshit charge that he had obstructed the police. That's a secondary charge. He went, didn't have a primary charge. This guy hadn't been arrested for shit. He had no police record, nothing. Do the racist Georgia cops give a shit? No. Why? Because the American public is so ignorant of the law and victims of the bullshit that we see on Law and & Order and all these other goddamn police shows that the police are good. They're doing good work. They're working for the citizens. No, they're not. They're a bunch of goddamn terrorists, and it pisses me off whenever somebody posts some happy horse shit about some police officer, you know, he saved a kitten or whatever. God damn it, people. Do you not understand what civil forfeiture laws are and that all these cops are running around scamming the people, robbing people uh, like a gang? Uh, they're not even like a gang. It's worse than a gang because, you know, the Bloods, the Crips, the MS-13, those guys and shit, they might be criminals and everything, but they don't persistently steal every single day that they exist. They don't get paid by the people of their particular states to steal from their fellow Americans, okay? The police do that every single day, and they do it because they know how to skirt around the law and when they want to get around the Fourth Amendment, all oh, like if I want to give this person some shit, I'm going to give them some shit. And that's what they do. They do it every single goddamn day. 
that they're allowed to be on there. There's none of them that are not crooked. And I mean your goddamn brother, your parents, uh, your father, whoever. I don't give a goddamn. I don't care what you say. The, the police's function is to keep poor people under control. And the, the genius part of it is, is that the police are paid by the people who pay the taxes. So the, the poor people who they are uh, subjugating are paying the salaries of the police officer. Now, what are they trying to prevent happening? Well, they're trying to, their functional purpose is to keep poor people from killing rich people. Okay, that's what they're doing. And the greatest thing, this must be endlessly hilarious, hilarious to white people clear across the country, oblivious, dumb shit white people that are in my friends list, who say, well, the, the police are doing a good job, you know, we need to do this kind of stuff, and, uh, well, you're the beneficiaries of this shit, and you're not standing up against it because you're pet posting this happy horse shit that, well, you know, the police are doing a good job. No, they're not. The police have no duty whatsoever to protect you from anything. They don't do that. They are revenue generators only, and every once in a while, they might catch a murderer, Maybe. If you want to look at the closure rate on your uh, local police department, there's rarely, and I mean rarely, a police department that has a 50% close, closure rate on murders. Murders! Half. you got a 50% chance of getting away with murder in the United States because the police are so corrupt, so inept, that they only solve about half the homicides that are ever charged. Ain't that some shit? And you think they're out there doing a good job protecting you and everything? It's bullshit. I saw this dumbass fucking idiot that I follow, Officer Ben, in uh, Columbus, Ohio, who is as crooked and dirty as a dirty bastard, racist fucking scum. And he's sitting there telling me, he made a post today about, well, uh, the, the police force don't come from... Uh, people who chased down the slaves. That's exactly what they came out for. That's exactly what the first police officers were doing in the United States. You gave them badges to say that they could go catch slaves. That's what their function was. Okay, And the police have not forgotten that for damn, what, 150 years? They still go out and do that. They still go out and arrest black people in a disproportionate manner. Because it justifies their existence. Well, it's just easy for you to believe, because you're white, that black people commit more crime despite them being 13% of the population. They represent 50% of the po prison population. Why is that? Because systemic racism is so ingrained in the United States that dipshits, like some of you in my friends list, will sit down and say, well, the police are doing a good job. The police do not do good anything, okay? Their purpose is to extract cash money from you, not to protect you, not to solve crime, not to uh, deter crime or anything. They don't do that. And they've, been a, 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 they've abdicated that responsibility. The Supreme Court said that they, no police officer has a duty to protect you from anything, and they don't. So why do people continue to do this? I don't know, but I got really fucking angry about it, as you can tell. My blood pressure is going through the fucking roof today because people don't understand the basic function of the United States. You don't understand that you want to, oh, it's the land of the free and the home of the brave, Thomas. You know, you just, you're just a little too libtarded. No, I'm not. I know how the function of the police are. I know that the United States is a police state. I know that the, if, if the police can't charge you for a legitimate crime, they'll concoct one like they did that black guy that I posted the video to. They concocted a crime out of whole cloth. And it's been a year and a half since that guy's charges have been, uh, since that guy's been arrested, and they still haven't dismissed it. It's going to be dismissed. The prosecutor doesn't have any reason to do it, but the prosecutor is accustomed to getting closure rate of in the ninety percent. So they're not. They're trying to offer this guy a plea deal. Well, if you plead guilty, we'll we'll give you credit for time served. He this guy didn't commit the crime, and people every single day in the United States. This is something you all need to learn quickly before you find out rudely that I'm telling you the truth. 
Every single day in the United States, in every court in the entire nation, innocent people plead guilty to crimes because they can't afford justice. And they can't afford to st spend more time in jail. So they just go ahead and do it, roll with it and plead guilty to things that they're innocent of. And we tolerate that kind of injustice in the United States, and especially all you dippers who sit around and fucking blow sunshine up the cops' asses like they do something good or beneficent to society, and they don't. And if you want to get my blood pressure up, put some fucking bullshit up about riding cops' asses, licking their boots. I'm fucking sick of it, and I'm going to get mad about it every single time. Well, that was cathartic. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, not sorry. Uh, it kind of got dark. There's uh, Bang Lamon. Boy, that's kind of bright over there, isn't it? There's Ginger and Karen, like the squid boats. There's the squid boats. God damn, I can't get the focus in. See, the focus is, and then when I focus there, I don't know why my eye... Maybe the new iPhone does it. I'm going to have to, I don't know. I still like this iPhone. I don't really need need the, the new one, although I'm an Apple junkie. and yeah, I kind of want that one. If any of you all work at Apple, I need a connection, please. I need an employee discount connection. Damn it. Why can't I get this to focus? Well, I'm just do a quick pan of the nightlife or the night scene here. It didn't get much of a sunset. That's pretty bright over there, but that's all the shipping yards. They, there was a whole gigantic mile-long line of ships waiting for them earlier today. But anyway, I don't want any of you all to find out or need the services of an attorney like uh, my father because uh, you're, you're ignorant of the law. If you're ignorant of the law, the law's not ignorant of you, and, the, and it will treat you in the rudest way imaginable. So, anywho, <clears throat> I hope you all have a pleasant day in Carpe Diem. Uh, see you all tomorrow.